Do video games actually make people more violent? Uh, yeah, when I fucking lose. Oh, and there we go. You're, you're champion right now. The unfortunate pop-off right there. When it comes to gamers raging out, I have a lot to say, speaking as a gamer who's had more than a few unfortunate pop-offs myself. But let's first observe the raging gamer after an aggravating loss, going through what I call the three stages of gamer grief. First up is stage one, anger. This is the immediate lash out. It includes the gamer slamming their controller, slamming their controller really hard, throwing their controller across the room, even throwing their controller through the window. <laughs> Did you just throw it out the window? Did you just throw it through the fucking window? Or a PC player might destroy their mouse, unplug their keyboard to more efficiently destroy it, or pull their keyboard apart to scream inside of it like an absolute demon. They might destroy their monitor, start hitting themselves, hit their desk a bunch, or just hit their desk three distinct times to establish order in their courtroom. They can also throw their headphones, throw their headphones and hit their desk, or maybe even clap their headphones together like some kind of ape who keeps getting King K rule in his Discover Weekly. They'll throw their microphone, throw their chair, fall out of their chair, or even square up and box their chair with surprisingly intimidating form for a tiny little kid. They could even destroy their cat tree, by far the most messed up one. What did your cat ever do except be scared awake by your dumbass screaming all the time? They might even go Super Saiyan, smartly hammer the button that throws to a technical difficulty screen so they can rage in private, or my personal favorite, hit their desk so hard it makes their webcam freeze, or even breaks their whole stream setup, revealing their private emails to chat. <laughs> now if only Hillary! Stage 2, Despair. Here, the gamer ruminates on how they've failed at or been failed by the game. Sometimes they do this with words. Fuck this shit! The game in this fucking room and everything went fucking bad. And sometimes no words could possibly do it justice. <laughs> Occasionally, it actually is the game's fault, but about 99% of the time the gamer is just looking to scapegoat their frustration, often in a ridiculous contrast to what we've just seen as the unbiased viewer. Oh my god, Treyarch, you fucking suck! Why the fuck this game sucks? Treyarch, you guys suck dick! And finally, we have stage three, regret. This stage includes apologizing for your outburst, beating yourself up for how embarrassing that just was. Look at the fucking TV, bro. What did you do? <sighs> I got anger problems. Or completely unraveling about not being good at the game because winning at a video game every time you play it is something that matters a lot. I'm a disappointment. I'm a garbage League of Legends player and I don't fucking deserve anything. This doesn't define you. Some only pass through one or two of these stages, and some speed run all of them in seconds. God damn it! Damn, you suck! Fuck this game! God damn it! Whoa, whoa. Woo! <laughs> if watching some of those clips you found yourself getting high on secondhand embarrassment, you're not alone. Sometimes gamers raging is entertaining, but sometimes it's just unpleasant. I find not only has my relationship with this type of clip changed over time, but the genre itself has evolved quite a lot over the years. Such a good segue. The first video game rage quit ever actually happened on video in 1969. It shows Ralph Baer, the inventor of Pong, stepping away after being defeated at his own creation. Like a uh, god with all the global warming stuff. I personally grew up in the 240p era of gamer rage clips where each one was a classic. An intimate glimpse into a young man with serious problems that we could all laugh at. The one where the kid playing DDR on his keyboard smashes his monitor through his wall has always been one of the clips that's hardest for me to look away from. The worst part of it is after his destructive outburst, where he shows off the wall he's completely demolished from similar incidents, including a Looney Tunes style hole in the wall in the shape of his head. It's worth mentioning that like any popular genre of viral clip, a good portion of its most notable entries are probably fake. Many personalities have built whole brands around playing up their over-the-top reactions just to get a laugh, like the angry video game nerd, angry Joe, Noah Caldwell Gervais. But this one has never seemed fake to me. It seems like a real window into a young man desperately in need of help, blending in among the sea of cringe comedy clips. But I don't know, it could be fake. So just to be safe, let's not get this boy any help.
In the past decade, with the advent of Twitch streaming and esports, the rage clip industry has been booming like we never thought possible. There are now more rage clip compilations than you could ever hope to watch, but streamer rages and esports rages are quite different categories. To me, it feels way more comfortable watching a streamer rage alone in their room versus an in-person one-on-one. Because when it's in person, you're seeing the winning player's joy turn instantly into fear. It really can cast a shadow over the whole event and suck the joy out of a win. Although if you're lucky, you've seen it happen so many times that you know how harmless and silly those reactions really are. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> and what's cool is with the rise of online competitive games, you can now find angry gamers mad at you specifically anytime you want, regardless of how you're performing in-game. Because no matter what, you're either too good and being a tryhard, or too bad and you're throwing intentionally, your team will get pissed off at you for that, or you're doing so medium, ugh, you're such a mediumer! Average boy! <laughs> Competitive video game text chat turns aggressive all the time, for the simple reason that it's the given place to express the anger you're feeling right after a loss. I maintain that if game developers replaced post-death chat with the freakout mechanic from Tony Hawk's Underground 2 where you would cathartically mash the buttons and be rewarded for it, 90% of toxicity problems in online shooters would be solved overnight. Being able to communicate in text chat really stokes those negative emotions, because as flaccid as it feels to blame the game for losing, blaming the player who killed you for doing something you see as unsportsmanlike feels not only just, but urgent. And that's definitely something I've done more than once or twice, or 10,000 times, among my other unfortunate pop-offs. One time, not Nearly long enough ago, I was getting beaten in an online Street Fighter V match, and it made me so frustrated that I leapt out of my chair and punched the floor. The floor of that apartment being half an inch of carpet covering solid concrete. I bruised my knuckles so bad it hurt to grip. For around six months after that, it hurt to hold a pencil, to hold a game controller, to hold my own children of men, Blu-ray. I was too ashamed to tell anyone, even a doctor, about what a stupid thing I did. So a few months in, I didn't know if it would ever heal. I thought I was just gonna live like that. And every time my knuckle pulsed in pain, I felt like such an infant. So unable to control my emotions while losing at a video game, reacting to this completely inconsequential moment, if anything even less maturely than I would have when I was a kid. Now I know what you're thinking. Leo, you're a pimp, that's an awesome story. Thank you, but I think it's humiliating, and maybe not even the worst of the many stories I have like that. That memory makes me cringe harder than the most unpleasant rage clip. But what was I supposed to do? Just walk away from the situation? That's letting the floor win! Let's take a minute to try and explain why games feel so important in the first place. I'm gonna try not to be too much of an armchair psychologist here, but uh, I will be a gamer chair psychologist. There are a few interesting studies out there with possible explanations, but I haven't been able to read those full research papers because information costs money. It's not just being handed out like everyday disinformation. But here's generally where I landed after reading articles and thinking about it a lot. Video games can be a vessel for what's called staging the emotional self. Especially when starting at a young age, it's an opportunity to experiment with different emotions in a safer, more understandable way than real life. And it kind of stands to reason that the happier you are when you win, the more mad you are when you lose, right? It's about how invested you are in your in-game performance. And that's why lifelong gamers, streamers, or professional players might rage more often than, say, my mom playing Wordle. Who just dropped another 2 out of 6, by the way. Just saying. And the more important the game is to you, the more your sense of self-esteem wants to step in and protect you when you're losing. And that's when you yell that the enemy was cheating, the game is broken, a hacker remotely detonated your computer vaporizing you instantly. Another thing worth pointing out is that every clip we've seen today has seemed to feature a man or boy of some kind. The culture I grew up in was full of messages that anger is the only emotion it's cool for men to express, especially if you express it by killing the Russian mob. And some men may already be finding themselves angry at me for making this generalization and writing a rebuttal comment that cherry picks a couple famous examples of women streamers getting angry. And I ask you to just consider funneling that energy into something positive instead. For instance, the like button. There's a school of thought that says anger actually isn't an emotion at all, but a secondary emotion, a response to an emotion, an expression of your sadness or disappointment in a way that feels like it gives you back control over the situation, and certainly feels easier, or at least 
more natural. All this to say, for me, it certainly fits that the anger I feel when I lose is a deep-rooted misdirection of the actual emotion I'm feeling, disappointment in myself. I have put myself in this game with my whole heart, so my character's victories are my victories, and my character's defeats are my personal failings. And that's emotionally intense. Imagine if I was shooting at opponents in real life and one of them killed me. I would be so mad. The catharsis of making fun of all these clips is that I'm making fun of myself. And I'm telling myself I'm recognizing more and more at a deeper level how stupid it is to react this way. And so surely now I'm gonna change. All it should take is one revelation, right? An Assassin's Creed revelation. But I have been on a many years long intentional journey to stop freaking out about video games and there is no trick that stops me from raging out in the moment. If I've let myself get into that situation where I have to clutch after hours of getting my ass kicked, already frustrated with no time to pause, and then I lose in a surprising way, let's just say my desk, keyboard, body, and floor better watch out because they're due for a pop-off most unfortunate. So the only useful technique for me is to not let myself get to that point. To pause, remove the headphones, and take some deep breaths when I can tell I'm caring too much. A damp towel on the forehead helps getting up and stretching, just having quiet time to myself. I also like to think about how much I look up to my friends who handle their upsetting gamer moments like absolute kings, unfazed and never forgetting that we're all here together to have fun, playing a video game, the things you pre-order at Toys R Us. I've also heard stress balls or pillows are good to have around for a safe outlet, and I've even been seeing research that throwing major ass can be a healthy coping mechanism. And let me tell you, these techniques, they work sometimes. I haven't tried the ass one. My instinct is to beat myself up for still not being perfect about it, to be self-deprecating for an easy joke, but I have gotten somewhat better. I haven't punched or bitten anything in a long time, but I've sure precision striked Alt F4 so hard I had to order replacement keys. Of course, self-improvement is never a straight upward path. There are some misses that I have to forgive myself for. You know, let's stop dancing around it and just talk about therapy. Everyone says, go to therapy, like that's a thing you can just decide to do and then you're doing it. Ridiculous. Not only is it expensive and a pain in the ass to even get to the point where you're told they're too busy to accept new clients, but gamers don't have any time to go to therapy because we're almost done with the battle pass. So there are links in the description for cheaper sliding scale options to look into if you've been needing those. Maybe this video about gamers embarrassing themselves has taken a turn, but I have personally talked through this stuff in therapy and it's where I got most of the tools I use. It's helped a lot more than just being ashamed of myself did. I'm also reminding myself that this struggle is not the end of the world. Raging out at video games is funny after all. I laughed a lot taking notes on rage compilations for this video in my Patreon stream. And even when I'm playing with my friends and one of them screams out in anger, Alex, it usually just makes the rest of us laugh. And of course, this isn't the only thing in my life that makes me angry. But I've been thinking that if I can use my investment in games, this staging of the emotional self, to practice techniques to control myself better, to end up proud of how I handled things, then maybe those skills can apply in other emotional situations too. Maybe all those embarrassing memories that haunt me will have been for something. And maybe they already have been. Honestly, did you even do anything in that round? Or, like, why are you even playing with us right now, man? That you're not going to contribute? Um, let's go around in a circle and say a teacher that really had a big impact on us. What? Well, for uh, me, well, it would well, be well, Mrs. Well, Olsen. Uh, my kindergarten teacher, because I'm in kindergarten, we make finger paints. Is that what you're going to say? Because you're a fucking little baby? My fourth grade teacher died, uh the year Good. after. Okay. I'm glad. <laughs> I, hope it, I hope it affected you. Why are you playing this game if you're not gonna even do the simplest things? I'm just trying to have a little fun, you know, blow off a little steam. Personally, why do you and Why do you play? I want to have fun too. And fun to me, dude, isn't doing what you're doing. It's not failing miserably. Did I call okay, you dude? Fun, I'm calling you dude. The way you condescendingly dude. said it made it feel like you were mad at me for calling you dude. I'm mad at you I, for a lot of reasons, okay? I think it would be healing for us to go through those reasons one by one. All right, number one, you're a little bitch. Stop. Okay, it's kind that's, of a that's, opinion. That's, that's the list. God, dude. Shut the fuck up so I can hear the game, okay? I can't hear when they're coming at me. When you're, oh, duh, 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 I play, it doesn't hurt me. Well, it hurts me when I can't play the game like I normally do. When I have someone like you jib jabbing away like a little jib jabber. Stop talking! 
A jib jab is something that's brought me a lot of joy. Is there anything, any kind of Where internet? Where do you live? What's your address? I'm going to find you. I'm going to strangle you in your sleep. Well, I don't want to say you could, that's your right. It'll it hurts me right. to hear that. It'll, it'll be my right to stay silent when I get arrested for the murder of you. It's interesting you know about the Miranda rights. Have you ever considered becoming a police officer yourself? I am a police officer, actually. How'd you know that? 